Hi, I'm Creston, and in this tutorial, we're going to go over Postgres SQL backup and point in time recovery. We're going to take a look at a few slides just to explain some concepts, and then we're going to jump into the command line to actually execute um, backups as well as do restores using point in time recovery. All right, let's talk about Postgres SQL backup and point in time recovery. So a point in time recovery allows you to restore your database to a specific moment in time, also known as the acronym PITR. It requires backing up the live database files as well as you need to archive the write ahead log. This is the log of all of the modifications that are happening to the database in terms of updates, inserts, deletes, as well as create it creating and deleting objects. Now, a point-in-time recovery backup cannot be used to upgrade a Postgres SQL database. Um, you can use a SQL dump in order to restore to a higher version, um, or you can use the utility um, PG Upgrade, but you can't use a point-in-time recovery backup to actually um, upgrade the database to the next version. You can only backup and restore a whole database cluster. So, uh, multiple databases can be on a Postgres SQL cluster. And you can't back up individual databases, you can't back up individual tables. If you need to do that, you can use a SQL dump to do that because point time recovery does the entire database cluster. And it can be done while the database is online. So what are the steps for a point in time recovery in terms of doing the backup? So first, for your Postgres SQL database, you need to enable archiving of the write-ahead log. And then you need to develop a process for uh, retaining these wall files, or essentially managing them. Because once you enable archiving of the write-ahead log, you're going to constantly be generating these log files. And you need to have a process in place for being able to delete them at a periodic basis, um, copying them and retaining them for to another um, like S3 or another uh, volume and, and just retaining them up until the point you want to do a restore. So once you have that in place, you can now back up your live database files using PG based backup. There are other ways to do it. Um, however, this is, I would say the easiest way to do is using PG based backup. Then you retain both the database file backup you have, as well as the wall files to replay the database to a specific point in time. All right, what are the restore steps for a point in time recovery? So first you restore the cluster files to a new directory. So the what was backed up with PG based backup, you restore them to a new directory. And then you restore the wall, file, wall files to in the archive log directory. Then you create a recovery.conf file in the cluster directory that instructs it how to do the restore. You start the DB cluster and it will re be restored to the point in time you specified um, in the recovery.conf file or the latest wall file. All right, so those are the steps. Let's actually take a look at this in action. Okay, we are in Ubuntu now, and I'm going to, I have installed Postgres SQL uh, 10, the uh, latest version as the time this video is being made. And the first thing I'm going to want to do, um, because I just relied on Ubuntu installing it, um, by default, the default install of Postgres SQL does not have um, archiving of the wall file enabled. But before I do that, I want to create a directory in which I'm going to keep uh, my PG log archive. Now, the Postgres user creates a directory um, that it stores in Ubuntu at var lib Postgres SQL. So I'm just going to create a PG log archive directory in that as the Postgres user so that the Postgres user has permissions to write uh, to that file. Whatever user you're running Postgres SQL as, um, you're going to want to have write access to that. So I'm just going to run this command that will create this uh, directory. 
And since I'm using sudo, I have to go ahead and put in my password. All right, so that directory should be created. Now, the again, on Ubuntu, when you install Postgres, it installs the configuration files at this path where uh, 10 is the version number. So I'm going to modify the configuration to enable uh, wall archiving. So I'm going to run this command, and this is the Postgres SQL comp file. And you can use whichever editor you would like. Um, now, by default, the wall level is equal to replica. Um, but we can check that really quickly. And we can see um, it is commented out, but the default is replica. So I don't need to change anything there. Um, basically, it needs to be at least replica to do a point in time backup and recovery. Now we'll look for archive mode, and by default it is off, so I'm going to want to uncomment that and turn it on. As well as I want to sp specify the archive command. In other words, how should those um, files be archived? And I'm going to use um, the basic example um, that is included in the Postgres documentation. So it just does a quick test and it's going to store them in var lib postgres sql and the directory i created and then it has variable replacement for um, different um, file names that's that's going to be written so once that archive command is there i'm going to hit head and write out that and exit uh, the editor okay so at this point um, we have enabled archive log mode. Now what I'm going to want to do is uh, restart the database cluster because when you turn this on, in, it said that a change requires a restart. So I'm going to go over here and use systemctl to restart um, the Postgres service. Okay. Okay, now I want to create a database and populate it with some data. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, go to this new terminal tab, and I'm going to um, assume the role of the Postgres user. So I'm now connected as Postgres to my local system. I'm going to go ahead and insert, excuse me, create a database, as well as run this command that's going to create a post table and insert two posts. All right, that's been, database has been created and two rows were inserted into this new table. Now I wanna go ahead and uh, do a manual log switch. So I'm going to run this command just to make sure that the logs have been archived. In Postgres 10, this is the command to do it, pg switch wall. Um, however, in versions nine, uh, or earlier than 10, the correct command is pg switch underscore x log. So keep that in mind if you're um, attempting this using uh, Postgres version 9 as opposed to 10. Okay, so it did switch the logs, because so I just want to write something out to that archive log directory. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a backup. Now, we're going to be using uh, pg base backup here and I'm I've set it to a the format to be a tar and specified the directory where it's going to go so this is going to store it in the directory so we'll go ahead and run that okay so it's returned and if I look at the directory I see there's a DB file backup directory. If I look in that directory, I see two files are created, a 
base tar, so this is all the database files, but it also grabbed the archive logs, um, excuse me, the wall, and put it in this tar file. So it generated two tar fi files. So when we do restore, we have to restore the base tar first and then the PG wall tar. Now, if depending on the version you're using, version 10 actually streams these wall files and creates this by default. Uh, in versions before 10, like version 9, uh, you actually have to specify that you want to do the streaming. But by 10, it happens, on version 10, it happens by default. So just keep that in mind if you're following along. Now, I uh, will actually look at this different backup command um, a little bit later. So now that we have a backup, I want to go ahead and restore uh, this backup. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the database and then destroy all the data in it. So I'm going to jump back to uh, a user that can do sudo. So I'm going to stop the database cluster. And I can just check if it's stopped by just doing a status. It says it's inactive. All right, I'm going to now be very careful with this. So you're removing every file in this directory, so make sure you're on a test system if you're doing that. Okay, so those files were removed. If I do a ls, I see that that directory is now empty. All right, so that's been restored. So now let's first, rest using this tar command, we're going to um, extract the base tar into this uh, directory where our database is stored. And again, this location was chosen by Ubuntu uh, by the default Postgres SQL installation for the cluster that gets created. Okay, so those files were copied in. Now I'm also going to restore the PG wall as well. into the PG wall directory. But again, if you're using a version earlier than Postgres 10, you're gonna need to use PG underscore X log. So it's not PG wall. All right. So those have been extracted. Now the next thing you need to do is you need to add a recovery.conf directory that specifies how the data is going to be restored. And this goes in your, essentially your cluster directory. Okay, so I've got an empty file here and I'm just going to put this information, the restore command, and it's just gonna say copy from, uh, cause it wants to know where the wall files are. I'm saying copying from this location. You can also specify a recovery target time. I'm going to do that a little bit later, um, but here's where you can specify up to a specific point in time when you want to restore, but I'm just going to restore to the latest. So I'm going to place that command uh, in the file. Go ahead and save it and exit out. And now let's start the database. So it's going to go ahead and start at the database. Okay, database is started. Now let's verify the restore is successful. So let's run uh, select all from posts. And there it is, our data has been restored. All right, let's do a actual point in time recovery. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do another um, database backup. Uh, this time, I'm actually going to show you a different way of doing it using compression. So for example, I'm going to use PG base backup. Uh, it's going to be a tar file. And I'm actually not going to stream the wall files into it. So what that means is I'm turning off wall streaming. So you're going to need to keep track of where your wall files are. Uh, the directory I'm 
in terms of the destination, I'm going to specify the hyphen, which means it's going to pipe, allow you to pipe it to a compression uh, program. So I'm using gzip. Uh, if you have a lot of cores in your machine and a large database, uh, to make this faster, you could use something like pigs, which lets you specify how many cores you can uh, calculate the compression across. But at the end, we're going to have one um, db file backup uh, .tarda gz. Uh, that is one file that contains all the live database files. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and run that back up. Okay, so that file has been created. Now I'm going to wait a few minutes um, from this point in time, and I'm going to insert these rows because I want to restore the backup prior to when these rows get inserted into the database. Okay, we're going to go ahead and insert these two rows. And now I'm just going to go ahead and archive the wall. Stop the database as before. And then delete all the data. Do the restore of the new backup file. So here we just have to do it once. We're just restoring this file. The wall files are still located in our archive directory that we created. Normally you would need to copy those back over from wherever you were storing those. I'm going to modify the recovery.conf. I'm specifying the restore command as well as a recovery target time. So we're targeting to recover it right before these two rows were inserted. those in there. Go ahead and save it. Let's start the database. And then see what posts are there. So you can see we just got two posts. Those two posts that we inserted later were not there. So let's take a look at what the logs look like. In looking at the logs, we see that uh, in the most recent start of the database, it's starting a point in time recovery to the point in time we specified, uh, restoring log files, consistent recovery state reached, uh, database systems system is ready to accept read-only connections. So it's you can only do selects. Uh, and then it says recovery has paused and you need to execute this PG wall replay resume to continue. Um, so you can log in, do selects, make sure the database is at the state you want it in, and then you can execute this command, PSQL, PSQL command, uh, that says to select PG wall replay resume. That will enable you to uh, set the database into a writable mode. And after you execute that, we can do another query and make sure that we still only have two posts. And looking at the log files again. Okay, in the logs, we see that archive recovery complete and database system is ready to accept connections. So we've successfully done a point in time recovery uh, where only those two rows are present. I hope that was helpful. If you want the commands used in this tutorial, be sure to visit the link in the description below. If you want to receive additional Postgres SQL content and tutorials, be sure to visit scalingpostgres.com and sign up. Thanks.